If you ever feel out of control around food, you're not alone, and you're in the right place to learn practical, no-nonsense information about why you binge and how to stop. Binge eating does not mean that something is wrong with you. It's a natural but primitive brain response that you can correct. If you're ready for change, sign up for the Brain Over Binge self-paced online course for less than $20 per month. And if you feel you need personalized support, we also offer one-on-one coaching and group coaching. To learn more, go to brainoverbinge.com forward slash subscribe. And I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the Brain Over Binge podcast, where you learn a simple brain-based approach to ending binge eating. I'm your host, Katherine Hansen, and for those of you who are new to the podcast, I'm the author of Brain Over Binge and the Brain Over Binge Recovery Guide. I've been recovered from binge eating for over 14 years now, and since I recovered, it's really been my mission to help others let go of this habit as well, because I know how incredibly difficult it is when binge eating is part of your life. I know that it actually stops your life in many ways, and it makes it so hard to enjoy yourself and to pursue goals or relationships or simply do the necessary things that you need to do day after day. I hope that the information and ideas that I share in this podcast and in my blog and my books and also in my course will help you let go of your struggles with food so that you can start living your life again. The topic for today's show is rethinking day one of binge eating recovery. I actually started taking notes on what I want to share with you about this topic, and it ended up being so much that I decided to split this discussion into two episodes. So if you're listening on the day that this episode is released, know that the part two episode will come out in one week to continue this discussion. I want to give you a little background to explain what the title of this episode means and how what I'll talk about today can help you. In my personal experience with binge eating and trying unsuccessfully to recover for many years, it seems like I had endless day ones. At the time, what I meant by telling myself it was day one was that it was the start of my recovery and the start of my binge-free life. I frequently made new starts and new resolutions. These new starts sometimes involved buying a new book that I thought would help me or making a renewed commitment to use concepts I'd learned from a book in the past or some therapy I'd done in the past. I'd often find a new meal plan that I thought would end my binge urges, or I'd tell myself I was going to restart a meal plan that seemed to be useful in the past. To prepare for sort of starting over in recovery, I would often schedule a new appointment with my therapist or nutritionist, or I'd find a new therapist and tell myself that my appointment day would be day one of my binge-free life. Leading up to the day I told myself would be day one, I would often do things like buying a new journal to record my thoughts and feelings, which my therapist told me drove my binging. I would sometimes make new charts to track my binge-free days. I would come up with new reward systems for myself for when I was successful. And then I would implement that system on day one. I would often create these elaborate plans for my days, thinking that if I somehow blocked out every minute with something to do, then I would not want to binge. And I would start implementing that plan for my time, starting on the day that I had chosen that would be the start of my binge-free life. The day that I picked was usually the start of a new week or a new month or a new year, but sometimes it would be more random or it would line up with an important life event. For example, it could have been midnight on my birthday or at 6 p.m. on a day that was 21 days from my friend's wedding, which started at 6 p.m., or it could be something like 15 days from the start of a new college semester. And I might even say that my commitment started on the time that my classes actually started. It could be really specific sometimes. Once I had my day one in mind and I felt committed to it, I would usually binge all the way until the official start time that I had set for myself which is something I'm going to talk more about in the next episode. My new plans and my new commitments had very good intentions, but they typically did not last very long. I rarely got to day three or day four without a binge, regardless of the plan I implemented. So it seemed like I was always implementing a new plan and then going back to day one. I knew that I really wanted to be free of binging, and I really thought my new strategies and setting a new commitment would help. But it kept leading to this frustrating cycle of starting fresh and then binge eating again, and then repeating that same cycle. If you've been trying to recover for any amount of time, you're never truly starting over at day one in recovery. I'm sure you already have so much knowledge, which you can absolutely use going forward. So in this episode, when I talk about making a fresh start or trying something new, it does not mean you're back at the starting line of recovery and that you know nothing and that you've made no progress. 
But if you've been binge eating and you feel the pain of that, there's nothing wrong with making a renewed commitment to yourself to end this habit or to try a new approach or to start using an approach that has helped you in the past, but that you stopped using for one reason or another. Or maybe you're someone who knows you've made a lot of progress and you can really see that, but you're still binging sometimes and you want to make a commitment to yourself to let go of the binging completely. And this could be the case for you, whether you're using the brain over binge concepts that you've learned in this podcast or my books or another approach or a combination of ideas that uniquely help you. Today and in the next episode, I'm going to take a different angle and I'm going to acknowledge that as much as I believe you're never truly starting over and as much as I want to help you see that, I know that binge eaters and people with any destructive habit do try to make fresh starts and fresh commitments. You definitely don't want to get in the cycle of doing this over and over like I did and have endless day ones. You want it to last. So I'm going to explain how you can better approach a fresh start in recovery so that you can make it last. When I look back to my frequent starting over and my frequent renewed commitments to recovery, there are two things that really jump out at me that were not helpful and likely contributed to keeping the cycle going. I want to talk about those two things in this episode and then the next one so that you don't repeat my same mistakes. When I was caught up in binging, I couldn't really see what was happening. I seemed to automatically go into starting something new or planning to start something new or making a new resolution. And I don't think I ever really slowed down to observe what I was thinking or how that was getting in the way of my progress. Knowing what I know now, I believe I could have better prepared myself to make a fresh start, or to make a renewed commitment to recovery, or to try a new approach, or read a new book, or to use a new meal plan, or even to use a new chart or a journal. As you listen today, think of something new that you may be wanting to do in recovery, or that you're planning to try, or something that you've had success with in recovery that you want to revisit. Or think of the day or the time that you promised yourself that you would make a fresh start. If you are someone who's beginning the eight-week course on September 9th, you can think about that day in order to prepare your mindset for the course. So the first thing that I think gets in the way of fresh starts and renewed commitments and recovery is thinking that day one of your new commitment or your new plan ushers in a new you who does not want to binge or at least does not want to binge much at all. The reality is that the you that shows up on day one has fundamentally the same brain pathways that you did the day before, and fundamentally the same physiology as the day before, when you were likely caught up in binging or dealing with the painful effects of binging. Once you repeat the behavior of binge eating many times, it becomes habitual. It becomes wired into your primitive brain centers, and the large quantities of food that you're consuming affect your physiology and your digestion and your cravings as well. Saying that it's day one and trying something new does not give you a new body and a new brain. Your brain and body will change gradually over the course of time as you decondition the habit and as your brain and body get the message that you're no longer binge eating and as they adapt accordingly. Nothing magically changes on day one. Thinking back to my experience, once the day came that I told myself I was going to quit, I expected there to be little temptation because after all, I knew I was committed to recovery. I expected little to no urges to binge because I knew I simply did not want that anymore. But my brain was not yet wired as someone who did not binge. It was definitely true that I did not want to binge anymore. My higher brain, the part of my brain responsible for my goals and my plans and my rational thinking, absolutely did want recovery. But what I didn't understand at the time was my lower brain's automatic programming. I didn't understand that no matter what day it was, my lower brain was conditioned to react as if I absolutely needed the habit. It didn't matter what shiny new binge-free day chart was on my wall or what beautiful journal was by my bedside. It didn't matter what feelings I was talking about with my new therapist. My primal brain centers kept driving me toward the habit. So when I started wanting to binge on day two or three or four of my fresh new commitment, I assumed it was really me who wanted it. I was so frustrated that I wanted to binge, even though just a couple days prior, I was so committed to recovery. It made me feel crazy to seemingly want two completely different things in just a matter of days. And when the urges to binge got strong, I gave in. And in those moments, it was like I was concluding that binge eating was what I really wanted, and the fresh start was not actually me. But after the binge, I always wished I could erase it. I wished I could go back to being that fresh start me. So yet again, I created a new plan, and I thought, this time I'll keep my commitment, starting on day one. 
The advice I want to give you here is if you're making a fresh start or trying a new approach or making a renewed commitment, absolutely do not expect your urges to binge to go away just because it's day one. Having urges to binge when you are committed to recovery does not mean anything is wrong with you. It means your brain is operating as it should. Your lower brain is attempting to maintain a habit that it's learned over time and that it thinks you need. With your new commitment, it's your job to begin to rewire your brain, and you can use whatever support or whatever approach works for you. If you're thinking of a date and time for your fresh start in recovery, think of that as when you will begin to chip away at this habit in your brain, and you can do that by not acting on the urges to binge. Each time you don't act on an urge, the binge eating habit starts to fade. A new start in and of itself does nothing to make the lower brain centers stop producing binge urges. So you need to know that you will have urges to binge regardless of the approach you use, and you will have moments when you feel like a binge is what you want. But that's the key. You'll only feel like a binge is what you want in certain moments. Feelings are sensations that rise and fall and change and are constantly in flux. Your feelings of wanting to binge have nothing to do with what you actually want, which is to be free of this habit. You can allow those feelings to pass, and then you will be able to go on to day two and day three and day 10 and day 50 and on and on, remaining binge-free, and those feelings will stop showing up. I thought my urges to binge were a sign that I wanted two opposite things, to binge and to recover, but that was not the case. I wanted recovery, but I had temporary feelings of wanting to binge because of the habit. Once you can make that distinction between your commitment to recovery and the temporary feelings of wanting to binge, you become much better able to keep your commitment to being binge-free. For those of you who will be starting the course soon, know that day one of the course does not mean your desire to binge will go away. You'll have basically the same brain the day before you begin the course as the day you begin. Starting the course or any other approach or any other form of help means you're getting started changing your brain to erase the habit. It does not mean the habit will automatically be erased. I hope that you found today's discussion helpful. I truly believe that if you expect a new start or a new commitment to take your binge urges away, it's going to lead to frustration and disappointment and worse outcomes. But if you have the proper expectations, you can make that new start or make that new commitment, and you can keep going in recovery until the habit is erased. Thank you so much for listening today. I hope you found this discussion helpful. If you're brand new to the Brain Over Binge approach and to this podcast, you can also get my free ebook, The Brain Over Binge Basics, from a link in the show notes as well. I really appreciate you being here, and I hope you'll join me for part two of this topic next week. I always want to encourage you and remind you that you have the power to change your brain and live a binge-free life. The Brain Over Binge podcast is produced and recorded by Brain Over Binge Recovery Coaching, LLC. All work is copyrighted by Brain Over Binge Recovery Coaching, LLC, and all rights are reserved. As a disclaimer, the hosts of the Brain Over Binge podcast are not professional counselors or licensed healthcare providers, and this podcast is not a substitute for medical advice or any form of professional therapy. Eating disorders can have serious health consequences, and you are strongly advised to seek medical attention for matters relating to your health. Please get help when you need it, and good luck on your journey. Need more help? You can find all of our current and upcoming options for support at brainoverbinge.com.